everybody. Welcome. We didn't. We both look like we're, we're dressed like witches today. I mean, it's Valentine's Day. I know. I expect? didn't mean to do that, but <laughs> I guess we are. Point. We're in like black sheer. <sighs> this is fun. Um, I got my STDs back. Nothing. Is that your good news? That's my good news. I'm, I'm not. I got no AIDS. I got no syphilis, no gonorrhea. They tested me all up and down. And the guy I'm seeing, he got tested up and down. So we are two clean little piggies. Do they check for cooties? Yeah, they do check for cooties um, to see who's been a bad boy and a mm. bad girl. Mm. And you, you're not a bad girl? No, I'm a very good girl. And, you know, I, on the last stream, this is on um, the brighter side, but I was talking about this guy, and they were like, he might be married. And I checked him. I asked him. He's not married. <laughs> Why did they think he was married? Because we went to some hotels, which I think is the good thing to do. It's romantic. It's romantic. I love a hotel. You tell me to check out at noon, I'm checking out 1201. You know oh, what I mean? Oh, sames. Samesies. Samesies. <laughs> You can also, you know, try to try to get a late late check out a lot of time in the lecture. Yes. Who are these people? Because my parents would always would be like, all right, the hotel wants us out at noon. We have to be out at 8 a.m. And then they would, like, make the bed. <laughs> I mean, that's very thoughtful. Very thoughtful. They said that people will talk, and we don't want a bad name. I'm like, we're in Alabama. <laughs> like, oh, the, they'll be the scandal couple? The scandal, right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Someplace Underneath. I'm Amber Nelson. I'm Natalie Jean. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to this uh, spooky space fest that we've got going on. It's a spooky space fest. I do love that our, our logo is a fingerprint in space. Well, I can't wait for wars in space to happen. Space crimes and space wars. I'm here. It's coming. It's coming at us, coming at us fast. Wasn't there like a woman who tried to murder somebody in space? It was like an astronaut, and it's like the only death in space is like a woman did it. Oh, I thought an astronaut just committed a murder on land. No, I think in space. Like her husband was cheating, or she thought he was, and then she like tried to kill him. I'm going to just accept that you're, that's the truth, and I'm not going to check. I love that we run like a fact-based show, and I'm just like, I heard... <laughs> this astronaut. So she texted you something. She committed financial crimes from the space station. Oh, financial oh, crimes. Okay. Get the fuck out of you. Okay. Wow, that's kind of fun. That's cool. That's actually pretty cool. Somebody said that she tried to murder somebody. They I'm pretty were sure liars. didn't an astronaut kill somebody in their life? You think of the diaper lady. The diaper lady? Diaper astronaut. Diaper astronaut. Diaper astronaut? <laughs> Guys, what are we doing here? <laughs> Going on. Diaper astronaut. <laughs> it's almost like to be that smart, you got to be a little bit crazy. Speaking of that gravity and being crazy, I'm uh, I'm working on a piece on the old uh, aerial hoop, Ooh. and um, I'm building up my my spinning tolerance because you have to, mm -hmm. um, uh, so that you can move around in it, and um, it sucks. So the aerial hoop, that's like when you go up and there you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mm -hmm. And just like, not just like an astronaut. Astronauts are slightly more challenged no, than I, think I am. But you're smarter and better. Um, probably. Uh, man, sucks. Because you got to spin and be upside down and like angle around and stuff. And yeah. um, it's barfarama. Yeah, I was about to say, have you thrown up? No, I don't usually. But I, I never experienced vertigo until I started doing aerial. And um, I'm not a fan. I'm going to go out and, and tell you all. I don't like it. Isn't vertigo like you don't know what's up and down and you're sort of like want to throw up? Yeah, it, you're, it's usually an inner ear thing where you start to feel like you're still moving when you're still. Ooh. It's, uh, it's, it's cool. It's a really fun time. Looks <laughs> like somebody wrote about the, the lady, the coolest lady alive. Mr. 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 Shanks. She's the one who drove cross country to try and kill her husband whilst wearing diapers so she didn't stop driving. Okay, okay, oh, okay. Good for her. Yeah. All right. I knew there was some little thing up in here. I thought she was one remembers. of those pee pee people. They like to pee pee and poo poo. And like, I've always wanted to have a diaper party, and this might sound disgusting, but wouldn't it be funny for five seconds if we all wore diapers and we sat around and just pissed and shit ourselves? I, that sounds funny to say, but I'm guessing in real life, I would be. I, I wouldn't want in. I would say I have to go. I have to go wipe myself. I don't think that's. Thanks for the sub. I don't think that's something that you want to venture into. I think I think it's going to be a, a land of regrets. Land of regrets. Uh, you know, it would like the poop would smell. Yeah, it would, it would get really stinky, real bad. Especially if like Ed was in there. 
I don't I don't want to go to a pooping party with Eddie. I'm sorry. We should do an LPN poopy party <laughs> and film it. Would you guys pay for that? I mean, we would have to charge if we were going to go down that road. <laughs> There's no returning from it. Oh, uh, well this well definitely I think you have some fun stuff for us and I have some mm. fun stuff. Is it fun? Mm. No. Let's see, which one should we start? Which the fun thing should which we start fun with? Fun thing. I mean, I guess mine is not as I don't know, mine's pretty bad too. Christian nationalism just making a big wave. Um, um uh, isn't it always It's always a fun little thing for people to do. <laughs> They're bored. <laughs> you know, they're always trying it. Yeah, why not? Trying it out. That'd be great. It's a little nationalism. Yeah, it's one I can see nothing but blue skies. Uh yeah, th- there's a lot of Christian fascism, Christian fascism going on. I can't join it cuz I can't say it. And that's one Christian of their fascism. first requirements. <laughs> you have to say it. Also, you're a little too mouthy, Natalie. Yeah, I don't I'd have to pretend I was a boy, you know. Uh, yeah, a lot of women still do that in some countries. They like keep pretending they're boys. I mean, I get it. I get it. Shall we start with my little things and we'll get, because Natalie's a little more interesting, <laughs> right? Uh, Tony Fax, eight minutes in and already fecal. I know, I know. And it's... I brought it up. I'm sorry. There was a lull moment and I said, fill it with shit. More like last poop cast network. Am I right, guys? <laughs> That's right. Right? <laughs> um, El Condor passes 69. Is Ruby Frankie still in court? So, um, oh, thank you so much. My makeup is very, thank you, Demon Learn, Lemur Nick. Um, thank you. Um, for my the compliment about my makeup, um, Ruby Frankie has not gone to court yet. So, ba- or, well, essentially, they're not going to go to court. So, both Ruby Frankie and uh, Jody Hildebrandt took plea deals. Essentially, so it avoids a trial, which is really good for the kids who would have to have probably testified, and people would have been like re-traumatized and all that. Um, they did it, I think, in the hopes that they would get slightly lower sentences. But there's also been some law experts saying that it's actually not really going to help them. And I think probably my guess is that um, Jody Hildebrandt's going to get a, lot, a much longer sentence. They're, they're estimating decades. Um, but Damn, that Ruby up. will still get a kind of a bad sentence. But I am really glad, as much as like as a like uh, like self for personal reasons i would have wa- wanted to see the trial um i would never want their the kids have to have to testify so i'm glad that's not happening more but babies in court that's all, what i say mm, mm. that's where you know they're safe it's light there's very bright in there of light. i want to see baby see judges oh yeah that's goo goo who's gaga Let's give it a try. We're having a lot of problems with judges right now. Sue them kids. That's right. Sign in the humans. Sue those kids. Um, please. They're all, they're just so needy. Um, <laughs> yeah, but so they're oh, both, both waiting sentencing is the long okay. way for me to say that sentence. Um, okay, so speaking of trials and judges, I actually am in favor of what's going on in this in this trial right i don't know if any of you guys have followed the crumbly saga um i think it's interesting and kind of relevant to what we talk about because we've covered vlogging family vlogging so much and how um parents sort of take control of of their children's uh, autonomy in, in a really gross way but i think the other side of that that's like very interesting to talk about is how we've had this obviously huge influx of mass shootings over the last couple decades like there's just been a lot a lot of them are from kids and Ethan Crumbly was one of those kids uh he was a high school student who ended up shooting uh he 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 killed four students um I yes you were telling me about the story in this car ride it's so harrowing speaking of sue them kids well he so he's of of course he's facing a life in prison he already went through his trial but this is one of the first cases where they are going to attempt to um, put charges on the parents as well. Right. So, oh. oh, sorry. My only, like, I want the, because you have definite reasons why there should be charges put on the parents, but my sort of, like, huh, like, slippery slope mm-hmm. would be what if, because people love blaming mothers for everything, like, I go out and do something, and then now people, like, sue my mother. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm, my mom should take 
responsibility, responsibility for all responsibility everything for I've done. I'm but, just kidding, mom. <laughs> yeah, but as you, as Natalie will tell you, he's had clear and repeated instances where the parents were very neglectful and well, he was still a minor. Um, wait, do you have the video of the Jennifer Crumbly uh, stuff? So this is his mom. Just want to play this video real quick if you guys aren't familiar at all with this story. This is Western Mass News. 24 hours after Jennifer Crumbly was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in connection to a deadly school shooting in Michigan, her son Ethan committed. We're getting reaction from across our area and from viewers like you at home. Welcome everyone to Western Mass News at 6. I'm Chris Pisano. And I'm Abby Carnevale. Western Mass News reporter Wesley Days is live in studio for us tonight with more on how this verdict affects us here at home. And Wesley, a case like this will set precedent for parents involved in incidents like these in the future. Yeah, it holds them more accountable, Abby and Chris. We should note that parents have been tried before for things related to their children's violent behavior, but this is the first time a mother has been charged in connection with the same crime. Guilty. Michigan mother Jennifer Crumbly is behind bars and will stay there for quite some time after a jury came back with a guilty verdict on four involuntary manslaughter charges tied to a November 2021 mass shooting that she didn't commit, but her son Ethan did when he was just 15. That's your job. You have to be responsible for your children and their actions and what they're doing. You have to be involved with them. That involvement Juanita Bachelor, a Springfield mother who lost her own child to gun violence, talks about was a key component for prosecutors in Crumbly's case. Her disregard for her son's deteriorating mental health, which they allege led to the mass shooting that killed four students. A ruling like that open parents' eyes and get them more involved in what their kids are doing, making sure they're not bringing any guns up in their house or taking them out in their backpacks. That alleged mental health disregard for her son, something the Gandara Center says you should not ignore. As a parent, it is extremely important that we're always aware of our children's mental health. Sometimes as parents, we see our kids' problems as not as big, but for them are very big and very important. So we need to make sure that we are understanding from where they're we coming. According to process. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. I mean, did, weren't you saying that he messaged his parents multiple times saying like, I am hearing voices, I need help, please get me help. And they were just like, bah. Okay, so as you heard in that video, they have already charged his mom. Um, well, she's guilty. They have, I don't think they've given her a sentence quite yet, but um, they are also going to be charging his dad. So it wasn't just on the mom. Um, he, his trial just hasn't happened yet. But um, okay, I wonder what you guys think about this. Uh, per personally, I think there, there needs to be a, a point in time, like the things that were laid out during this case, where the parent does have to take responsibility to some extent. Not always. There's many cases where that's not true. Right. But it, there was so much evidence showing that kid, and I, I'm not trying to defend him, but he begged for help he begged for help from his parents he was begging for help from school the day before like the day of his shooting he had scribbled like a gun and dead bodies all over his math test and handed it in literally was begging to be stopped Aww. and and like this i actually don't hold the school super accountable i i watched um a lot of the people i watched a lot of the trial and the counselor tried to get his parents to take him home that day after that paper was um, shown and they said that they couldn't because they were busy. <laughs> so they were busy. They, they left him in school that day. Um, but he'd also like been texting his mom that he was seeing demons in the house that and she would ignore him. There, there's all of this. There's this footprint behind all of this that she was a horse lady. She became a horse girl as a, a mature woman, um, was obsessed with her horses, having multiple affairs. Uh, so was the dad. They were clearly, in my opinion, completely checked out from they, they did not want to raise this kid. They were super yeah. annoyed that they had to do it. Oh, that's so sad. It's so, I mean, it does suck. I do feel bad for him in that sense. Obviously, he's now a murderer. He can't we can't take away what he's done. But um, she was like openly calling him to people at that time, not when he was a baby, but at the time of all this happening, her oopsie baby, a 15 year old. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's really he was like begging for help, anybody to help him. And then he just got denied, not even denied 
fully ignored. Like his mom, like and dad, were like would laugh at him. God. And then they bought him a gun. And they, they bought him a gun. You said that they bought him a gun. Zigariah says parents have been fighting and fighting to keep their parental rights to get their children ignorant of anything they don't like. If they want every single thing to go through them, then the child's crime should go right through the parents as they have fought for. That does, you do make a point. Yeah. If I, children are considered property and your property starts acting up, I mean, who's responsible for the property? For sure. In Again, there's so many instances where I would never want to hold the parents accountable for kids' actions. However, if there is a paper trail of what what the fuck? The kid did exactly what he was supposed to do in that situation, which was to repeatedly ask for help. Doesn't excuse what he did. But what the fuck else? What are you supposed to do? What are you supposed, I mean, I guess he could have. He was, like, even reaching out to his, like, one, he had one friend who um, he told, like, my I'm asking my parents for help and they ignore me or they make fun of me before all this happened. Then his friend moved away. No. His grandma died. His dog died. And then this happened. Oh, my God. And, like, during a lot of the text exchanges, his parents would literally not respond when he was saying he was scared in the house. I hate this. Yeah, it sucks. And it, to be honest, I'm being a little biased because I've listened to her, the mother talk a bunch, and I don't like her. <laughs> I don't like her. <laughs> what does she sound like, Natalie? Does she sound like that, or is she the one of those like, you can't take my horses away from me? Well, for example, she, whenever they asked her at the end, because she decided to testify in this case, which was a, a weird choice in my opinion. Um, she went up to the stand, and she got in cross examined and all that crap that happens and um at the end of it i believe it was her attorney asked her if she would have done anything differently and she said no but then she said uh she wishes that he would have killed um her and her husband instead of the others and not like i wish i would have paid more attention and gotten him help she just said, I wish he would have shot me instead, was the way she responded. And I was like, girl, you are not doing yourself any favors. I don't know what you thought that was going to get you. God, such violence. She probably wanted him to end his own life. I kind of think that. Okay, that's complete conspiracy Just like take the stuff. garbage, garbage, take itself out. I don't think he's garbage, but you know what I mean? I do, he's a murderer. I do kind of think there is a tiny chance that she was, they not, she didn't bite the husband did, the, the gun, but... I kind of feel like she was hoping a little bit. Like both parents maybe were just hoping like this problem would take care of itself. Getting your kid a gun. My God. We got some comments here. Yeah, I know. Uh, I went on my little rant there. No, um, no. Yeah, you, uh, let's see. Negligence is hard to prove, but in this case, they wrote everything down. Tony Fox, you're completely right. He was, yeah, Picky Pineapple, he was begging his parents for help for a while. And Bobby Flay, why give him a gun? Uh, exactly. That's. I know that... There's different culture reasons, and this has happened a number with a number of mass shootings that you find out, or just even like murders, when it's somebody who is a minor who has had mental health issues, who's the parents specifically then bought them a gun because I think in some cases it's just maybe in their where they live it's very normalized. But you would think if your kid was experienced like I, for, I wish i remembered off the top of my head i'm thinking one specific person who had been institutionalized and everything right and then his dad bought him a gun afterwards and then he shot i think his family i wish i remembered the name of that person but i don't know people want to <laughs> return to tradition go to so bad like if your kid is acting up like that return to tradition and send them to a lighthouse to work <laughs> you know what i mean you go work in the lighthouse we just don't have the problem is we don't have enough lighthouses anymore. Damn. I don't know. We got rid of all the lighthouses because of all technology and now I there's know. nowhere to put them. Um, Some yeah. people are designed for certain jobs. And that's if you want to return to tradition. Oh, your kid's a little got a little sp monsters in here? Send them over there. But you, the problem in these situations Make them a this kind of thing that the Crumblies just went through is that there's a solid chance that he could have gotten help and it would have been not this. You know what I mean? Like, he was a kid when this happened. Kids go through crazy things up here. Sometimes they need help. And once once they get the help, then maybe the crazy things kind of, like, go to the back. And then, they're like, we all figure it out eventually. Like, the crazy maybe. things might stay back here, but they just stay back here. I know. Well, in America, if you're watching this from outside of America, our mental health 
care for teenagers is a coach um, off after hours within a chalkboard uh, just screaming at you telling you to stop masturbating that's what we do here yeah we do <laughs> yeah which is super helpful for the, the the mental space if you just like feel like your genitals are evil and then you're like no stop it stop it stop it stop it yeah that makes you feel a lot better um, thanks for the sub Jones P Japes um, Mr. Shank, some parents actively prohibit their children from getting mental health help because it feels like it is a black mark on the reputation. A hundred percent. Same thing with, we talk about it a lot. There's a, a diddling uncle. Sometimes nobody wants to talk about it because then everybody's going to be thinking things about your family. But much be much easier to like repress that and put it away. We're not going to deal with this because what if people think something about us? What if? And the thing is, is like the light truth is always shown it might take longer than you think and i guarantee this like well we don't want to make waves and we have to show face it's it's going to make it worse at the end of the day yeah i mean eventually when it does come out people are definitely gonna be talking about you, so you on a, a live stream yeah. these two fucking bitches over here being like did you see these idiots so it's gonna happen eventually you know <laughs> stop uh, getting hard right yes yeah so that's it's a it's a really shitty situation and i think in this instance this is a good thing because we're having so many kids with struggling and having access to like easy open access to guns and yeah. parents who are ignoring them and so i think there needs to be like a tiny bit of a precedent set i agree it could go yeah too far but i doubt in this country it would to be honest i doubt it well my mom's a teacher and i've slowly seen the decline of like kids in school and i i know this is going to sound really bad but a lot of these kids don't know how to read and the big problem is their parents because their parents are like he's the light of my life he's my special boy and then they send him off to class and he like throws a chair across the room and the teacher is like spending the whole time like getting him calmed down that they can't even teach and then the parents come in for a conference and then the, the usually nine times out of ten the parents yell at the teacher and say you can't discipline my kid you can't tell him you can't backhand him yeah i obviously i'm not a part of this community but uh of teaching or anything like that but i have seen a lot of teachers saying that on the old internet the old internet it's just gotten worse and worse i think as parents they don't they're probably too busy working six jobs to afford to live, and some of them just never wanted to be parents to begin with, I'm sure. Yeah. Speaking of special little boys, I feel like if you name your kid Mason... Um, and he's not a jar? <laughs> he's on. he's going to slip an abortion pill in somebody's drink? It's the, the higher percentage of chance. That's right. Oh, Bobby Flay says, I quit teaching this year, and parents are the problem. Ugh, All caps. Man, I'm so sorry. I, I'm... I, completely feel why you would that sucks we need the, teachers are so um, disrespected in general and we need them so badly right. and uh i get why people are leaving it's uh, i just i don't know what the answer is education is going to be more privatized and then there's something in texas about like a, a a zoning permit or like students have to have a permit now i need to do more research for it to start blah 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 on eh. here, but, <laughs> you know but you're is. pretty but i'm pretty am i though <laughs> am i pretty am i pretty <laughs> uh, uh well let's talk a little bit about this because uh we got i got some questions uh there's a guy named mason herring okay so this is a new story if you want to pull up the mason herring link there eric mm. down beaties thank you for gifting all these subs so this but this little boy this little oh. special boy he uh, had he who sentenced as you see 180 days in jail uh, for putting an abortion pill in his wife's drinks to get out of having another child with her. Because I think in his words, it would ruin my plans. That's yeah. in his words. It would it would mess up my plans. Well, he, he was in having an active affair at the time, right? Which of is course. you know that's plans. Right, Those are plans. He got 180 days in jail, but if she did it on her own volition, I mean, in some states, she'd be charged for murder. So the deal with that, yeah, the deal with that, well, I mean, this is in Texas, which is yeah. the thing that blows my dick off more than anything. They don't care about you, ladies. Come on. <laughs> uh, 
It's almost like you have to laugh because it's just like beyond the pale. They don't give well, up. Well, at least you're saying the, you. the quiet part loudly. Uh, but so the deal with this guy is he was married to this woman. They had, I think, two kids um, already. And she, I guess they were discussing getting pregnant or they he was pretending like he was fine with it. Whatever case, they weren't. They were continuously, I guess, getting pregnant, and he kept slipping. What's it called? Misophthalmoprophol. A fancy word. He kept the putting big into long drinks. word uh, yeah. that he was slipping into her drinks. It was causing spontaneous abortion, and she became sus- suspicious of him, and so she put cameras in the house. And man, is that. Man, can you just imagine your own husband? Like, like you I have think to like be killing film me? him to try to find out. Caught him putting the stuff in her drinks, and the last pregnancy that it happened, the child survived, and now has disabilities because the drug affected the fetus yes, in whatever it, way. Lots of extra help and hands are needed for the special baby. No, it's special needs kid, and um. After all of this, with the evidence and everything, in the state of Texas, he got 180 days in jail sentence after doing what they say is like a life sentence. If a woman, if a did, woman it. did it, truly, I'm not even trying to be like girls rule and boys and rule. Boys do. <laughs> but seriously, are you are you kidding? They like you don't. You're just saying you don't care. You don't care about this. Like, what are you talking? No, it's you all don't about, care about fucking babies. It's just harming women. That's all they want to do. And this might lead to my next story. Do you have more to say? Well, on I this? just wanted yeah. to also pull up. Um, I pu- I gave two links. I think if you can find the one that's uh, versustexas.com, I think it's more easily accessed. But. Uh, Texas.com, and they just shoot you in the head. <laughs> <laughs> it's called versus tech versus Texas. Okay. I think um, either one of those abortion ones. So essentially I'm pulling it up because this dude forcibly ab- aborted fetuses against the mother's will and then caused a lifelong special needs disability issue with the kid who did survive and his lawyer during in some of those statements was saying he understands what he's done and he's taking responsibility. Oh fuck you. <laughs> and fuck you, man. That basically what 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 I just pulled up is essentially saying they have this thing in Texas called the trigger law now and you can spend up to life in prison for um, getting an abortion. But if the dude does it I want to fucking punch. Or if you're his I want mistress. to punch Texas right in the face. Yeah, they they hate you. They hate they really you as do. a woman. That's so crazy. Get to me. out. If you're a woman, leave. If you can, I know it's expensive. It's hard. Maybe you're a Republican and you're like, but it wouldn't happen to me. Yes, it will. Yes, it, it will. It's just I cannot wrap my mind around how flippantly they're just like. Well, it was a guy. He was fucking some other lady, you know? That's fine. Just, uh. Can I show you some Republican women and how they do the backlash like against in them? In lingerie or like? And like, can I show you some women in lingerie, Natalie? <laughs> what do we, yeah, what are, you, what are we looking at? So this is like, this is how much men hate, like these, and I don't say all men, these like conservative right wing men, they hate women, even if you're Republican. And these, I'm going to show you some Republican women that are starting to be like, wait a minute, they hate me? And I'm just gonna show you some instances. So let's look at this picture of Nikki Haley. So she's saying like, girls, single girls, you know, strong girls become strong, women become strong women. And then someone writes, let me pull it up so I can read it better, sorry guys. Someone at the bottom writes, um, Nikki Haley. So she's running for a Republican. Yeah. Uh, It all starts with strong knees and no gag reflex at the Nikki Haley School for Women Who Don't Read Good. So this is a woman running for president, and this is her responses. Okay, so they fucking hate you. Let's keep going. Uh, This is another girl who is a a Republican. This is what she says. Almost every cringy—wait, sorry. There's been at least, like, five men on Twitter— 
who have made me literally sob. Not because of some unrequited attraction or some bullshit, but you guys literally are so fucking mean and nasty to women on here. It's like you guys go out of your way to hurt women's feelings, especially if we don't agree with every single thing you say. I've been called all sorts of disgusting names by guys who I thought were my friends, all because I dared to disagree with them on some political or social topic. Y'all men of Twitter do not represent men at all. You guys have a shitty representation. And then it's just people laughing at her. I just this is what they think of you. I'm showing you again what they think of you. Let's do let's do another one. So this is a graph. So this is a graph of like you could see the uh, women are becoming more right wing and men are becoming more uh, sorry women are becoming more left wing men are becoming more right wing. And what's the comment? And I don't want to say the creator's name because they're very popular. They're a very popular nationalist. This creator was absolutely right. The liberation of women makes democracy into a terminal disease, one that doesn't just end with particular government, but the end of civilization. They fucking hate you. They don't even want you to speak. They don't want to see you. They don't want nothing. They want you to perpetually sit in a kitchen and give birth. These right-wing men. I, uh, that's all, that sucks all, that's trash. I do wonder what the, what end game that middle one was expecting after she posted that. Oh, right. There's a, you are fighting, you're trying to like kick a wave against the sand if you're going to go on Twitter and be like, people are so horrible here. And they just laugh it's in not, your face. It's not going to end well. Like, it, it's not going to go, they're not going to see it and be like, introspective. <laughs> Be like, no. Wait a second. Let me go look in the mirror for a minute. What am I? What am I doing? What I, am I doing? Maybe I'm the problem. And I get it. Like I'm just putting this. If if you are a Republican woman watching this, I get it. I might have even had some of those views in my past. My mother's a Republican. I'm just showing you what men these Republican men think of you. They say I'm here to protect you. They are not. They are not. No, no, they no, hate no. you. Here's another guy who's very scary, and he just got elected in Oklahoma, and here's what he wants to do. I want to see uh, pornography abolished. I want to see no-fault divorce come back to at-fault in divorce, uh, and even public shaming for those who are at fault in divorce. I want to see uh, abortion abolished. Uh, these are the kinds of morality and government issues that we need to get back to. Is this name Dunty? <laughs> What's his name? What's his name again? I kind of, I've been like doing Deavers. a lot. Deavers. That's his name. He wants Deavers? to make Deavers. Wait, so his first name? His last name. What's his first name? Dusty, Dusty Deavers. Oh, Dusty. I'm going to call him Dunty. Hey, Dunty Deaver. If you want, if you get or receive a, a sexy message from your boyfriend, he will send you to jail. I mean, good fucking luck, dude. I'll run you over. <laughs> Metaphorically, I mean, these guys, what they do is they slowly and they'll come in and they say they say what they're going to do. And they say, like, if a woman is raped or even if she has a child and the child will terminate her life, if she ends the child's life to save her own, she'll be tried for murder and be killed. And I know that we're like, oh, that could never happen, but it can and it will. And we're seeing these people pop up all over, all over America in these very small little pockets, and it's slowly tilting towards fascism. I'm honestly kind of scared. I, I get it. I don't think you need to be super terrified of it. I think that, yeah, I know that's scary, but uh, it's not going to just happen without a huge clawing fight I, I but guess. dusty dunty B beavers looks like he goes to poop parties dunty beavers. i will say that yeah he the pornography thing i'm just like what is on your laptop oh it's oh can you Dude. imagine his, his his he would it would be like toxic trying to like toxic waste just like trying to like lift his his fucking macbook right. up just filled with so much virus shit um yeah no these those kind of dudes always got the worst things you can imagine on their computers. Right, but he's elected. He's in there. He's not going to do shit. He's all, those kind of dudes also, he's not smart. He's not going to get anything accomplished. He's just, he's making, he's riling people up, which is not good. People love him. I'm, because America does Who have Who loves problems. him? A lot of people do. America does have its problems. We've got politicians that are just embezzling money. Wall Street keeps getting bailed out. And I'm so sick of women and gay people being thrown to the fire. As if we just stop them, then we'll live in some great, <laughs> some great nation. We're not. We're just being used as a scapegoat. Of course. Same with poor people, which we talk about a lot. Right. It's the, they want you to be mad at other people 
who aren't billionaires. That's who they want. They. I hate using the term. I hate using the they word when I'm we're talking about stuff because it's it's lazy. But you know, billionaires essentially. Right, right. Who right. run things. Um, but yeah, fuck that I wanted, guy. I wanted to while we were here to. I wanted to just briefly touch on a case that we've covered on the main show. Uh, I believe in season two, which was the missing uh, case of Harmony Montgomery. Um, we she's still technically missing, but as we've covered several times, it's most almost certain that she is deceased. Uh, her father, I guess we have to call him, such uh, a creepy guy. He is finally on trial currently. Um, and I just wanted to touch on it briefly because we're going through the trial and they are they are doing it on video. So you can actually watch a bunch of it. However, <laughs> during this trial right now, um, he's refusing to show up because it's not it's all the um, people who are witnesses and stuff. So apparently you don't have to be there for that. And usually people are anyway, but he's just elected to not come to any of any of the testimony oh. stuff about him uh which is really cool <laughs> he seems really great i'm glad that he had a bunch of kids and that he had um custody of them when he was living in a car like that's awesome is uh idiocracy a documentary i don't know i, I mean this is unfortunately much sadder than idiocracy but it, it, he's they're from that area of like massachusetts new hampshire where there's really intense drug problems um and certainly he and his so the bio mother as well they both had addiction issues the bio mother's name is crystal she has been fighting for trying to find harmony for years and has cleaned her life up adam instead married um a woman who also had a, a drug problem and they had a bunch of kids together and he somehow maintained custody of those kids and had custody of harmony even though there were a bunch of homes who wanted her her one of the people who adopted her brother wanted to adopt her and they were like no 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 let's this this career criminal this violent career criminal just let him have her in a car let her live in a car in the winter um don't worry about it. Don't ask any questions. That it's just fine. feels like somebody slipped through the cracks. Or But it wasn't e I mean, there it's what's really frustrating about that entire case is that she didn't really slip through the cracks until she disappeared. Then literally nobody checked on her for almost a year. God. So when they when they like ended her life, and I don't even want to talk about what he did, but because he's first off he's denying it, so we don't know for certain, but his wife, uh essentially Harmony's stepmother has talked a lot about what happened um, that he's denying, but it was very violent and so, like, completely pointless. Like, I just don't even, I know any child's death is pointless, but it was like, just what kind of, how can you be a human? How are you a human being? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, oh, and L'Oreal says, he's from around my area. A nearby town used to have one of the highest rates of teen pregnancy in the area. Then meth and opioids moved in, and pregnancy is down, but everyone's getting high and dying. I, I don't think that's good. I wish that if you were going to do that, like, just don't, we've said this before, but just don't have kids. Like, why, I know that there's many reasons some people think that they're going to get over their addictions and they actually wanted children but i know sometimes people do it because they get money from the government for kids right or maybe um, they're in a state like oklahoma or tennessee where you have to give birth to the kid i think in wait no in, in texas i think twenty thousand children already are the product of rape oh yeah 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 that's fun that's a fun little statistic too <laughs> yeah the bunch of kids have been born through rape because of the thing right. yeah that's cool i'm sure they'll be fine um but up there, I don't know what their sex education is like either. Maybe it's fine. I don't know. But, um, yeah, they had a butt between the two people who were a part of this um, murder. Uh, they had a bunch of kids between them. And there, they had a bunch of witnesses come up during this part of the trial. And one was including uh, what their drug dealer was subpoenaed. And they were buying both uh, meth and heroin sometimes trading it for food stamps oh. and one of the things that's uh most egregious about the the stepmom who is definitely at fault as well i don't i don't think that she's like innocent in any of this and she also definitely helped keep the body 
they I this she kept the body yeah, like a little yeah. girl yeah just like in a freezer in a duffel bag in a duffel bag did did not smell bad because it was like snowy she put her in the snow um this is so gruesome you guys so just be like forward but it was in their car she was in her uh, their car for a long time and then it was so long that they ended up putting her in a ceiling um at a family crisis center they were staying at and uh, a trigger warning for this but it was dripping down um on their own other children uh that is yeah that is disgusting yeah i hope you didn't come for a good time tonight guys um (laughs) On Valentine's Day, is this, are you guys spending your Valentine's Day with Wee! us today? Yes. Love is love. Um, um, so the kids were like, Mommy, why is this uh, so salty coming out the ceiling? Yeah, yeah. it's it's fuck, it's fucking horrendous. Uh, but they were continuing to collect money. The, I guess when you have kids, there's certain benefits you get from the government um, as far as like more food stamps and, and, and like help in that way. And they were continuing to co- collect for Harmony after she had did killed her so they weren't reporting it of course and uh still collecting the government money assistance they were getting for her i mean can you go to extra jail i mean that motherfucker's not getting out that's for sure but he is the most like repulsive the whole time just being like i don't know what you got like they there's all this footage of him in um the uh interrogation rooms and stuff and it's Mm -hmm. just like oh no i don't know what she is the fuck man i don't know jesus here's a question and i'm speaking out loud and this might be problematic but if we find a man like that and he's been like repeated offender for like drug offenses and violence should the state sterilize him you know i god it's just so tempting isn't it because that might be eugenics but it also might stop a kid from dying and bleeding out on other kids this is it's the slippery slope issue slippery yeah it's it's so tempting because that man should not have ejaculated should have not anybody. Had kids. Uh, Winter Hills Honey says, "I'll allow it." It's so hard to not want to. D- uh, Distal five thrive three generational trauma changes brain chemistry, health, immune issues beyond mental health disorders. Yes, and we're not being very sensitive in that. We're not obviously mental health professionals. I'm experiencing emotions about. I'm an idiot. I hate him. Um, Rug and tub says no. But yeah, no. It's let's do a poll chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no, kidding, no, 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 let's not. Let's not do that. Uh, I'm talking out of my ass. If, <laughs> if he's like repeatedly going in and out of like violent offenses, drug addictions, this kind of attitude, I mean, snip and clip. Well, one of the one of the uh, witnesses in the trial and early on was, and we talked about him on the, the when we covered it, it was uh, Adam's uncle who witnessed her with bruises on her face from other times because he would punch her and stuff, you know, like you do with a tiny little baby. Um, and uh, he has said on record before that they grew, they obviously also grew up in trauma. Like they're, he he's like, I know what Adam grew up in. I know what he had to, to endure as a kid. It's not an excuse. Um, I think on top of the obvious generational trauma he's also just kind of a piece of shit right um especially the way that he was reacting to being questioned he's never shown like an, a, an ounce of sadness or remorse he's probably or, mad that they're even questioning him like oh just let me go do some more drugs and the his uh the stepmother too, who might not even get very much of a sentence which is really mind-blowing she to me. like hid the body right yeah yep um she, that's like something she yes. also she's also said that she was wildly deeply abused by him and beaten up by him and I know that that is like very significant and relevant because even on the stand she's still kind of talking about him she you guys love. she kind of still so she was on the stand she's been in jail for um they got her on one of the charges as far as like i think it was fraud or something about hiding the body so she's been in jail but i don't think she's going to stay in that long but she agreed to testify against him and she made this list of demands and um they're not going to do them and for whatever reason she still got up on the stand but one of them was that before she testified against him, she wanted to be able to see him one more time and like talk to him and be in the same room with him and basically like 
like a conjugal make love visit? to him. Yes. No, so she can get pregnant one more time. I don't know. Um, that obviously speaks to a much deeper issue as far as like. Uh, if he was super abusive to her, that is a thing that happens to people where they like bond with their abuser and then they're they're in that cycle. However, when it gets to a point where your children are being murdered and like your own kids were living in a car with him, I, I lose a little bit of sympathy yeah. because you're dragging innocent little babies into it. And I don't it makes me hard. It makes it hard for me to sympathize. But she yeah, part of her um, requests were to spend time with Adam before she did it. So were they like, no, miss? Yeah, that's. I mean, they can't. No. Also, she said she didn't want to lose custody of her children as one of the demands, which they cannot do. They cannot give the children. They can't use the children as a tool to get her to talk in court. Um, unfortunately, unless she can get into like super treatment and like recover and become a different person, she was. Her kids were living in a car in winter time with her, so. She can't probably have custody of them. Like, no. And then where are the rest of the kids going to go? Just random houses around the world? I mean, they'll probably be put maybe hopefully with family or either otherwise foster care, you know. But the, the, what, the, the overriding issue with like CPS and all the things we talk about, it's not that CPS workers, they're, they're wildly overworked. They have too many cases. It's the system itself is all jacked up. It's not the people most of the time. Sometimes it could be, but most of the time it's right. not the people. It's like the system is not equipped to deal with any of this. And there is no reason that he should have gotten custody of her. Zero percent reason that he should have. And it's partly because I think because he was the bio dad. That's why. I mean, moving forward with abortion becoming illegal. I mean, just in Texas with the 20,000 kids born out of rape. I mean, we have to have more funds into foster care and CPS, and, but we're not going to do that. So we're looking down the road. I'm saying 50 years down the road. We think this is a lot of mass shootings now. Get ready. <laughs> Get this ready. is a bleak episode. Sorry, I know guys. we're always talking about dark things, but this was this one went hard. Yeah. Didn't mean to. That's okay. Sometimes it just happens. There's a lot of terrible news going on right now. There I is. just like I I didn't even look into it, but I just watched the opening part about a, a case where uh, a 21 year old guy uh, catfished some teenagers into murdering a special needs person, pretending that he had nine million dollars. Why? Why did they want to murder the special needs person? Because he's bad. Because he's just like, oh, get him! Like your brain. Are we about to turn into like these like? I don't want to say medieval because the medieval wasn't the dark ages, but it was much more violent. Yeah, it was super violent. Uh, is it going to be like that? Like roving gangs? That's what it was like in Europe in the medieval times. Maybe. I don't know. Right. There's cool stuff. Uh, the dresses were cool. <laughs> the dresses were cool. Um, there wasn't a police force in the medieval times, but if they did catch you, that's why the punishments were so harsh, because people were re re like rarely caught um, stealing and robbery and thievery and rape and whatever. Um, is it going to be like that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Just dangle a little sack of chatchel of uh, coins on my on my pocket. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Can't over, uh, coins? Coins chocolate? Chocolate? I can't get over the little girl's body liquids falling on these other orphans. Yeah, I did it. I did it. I'm sorry, everybody. No, I asked. I only understand medieval times through the Renaissance fairs, which is, I think, wildly inaccurate. Right. We all get a big turkey leg. Let's go back. And a big can of it's meat. It's not even the same time period, but it all gets just kind of mashed in together. That's right. You, you got to take the best from each generation. The costumes, the frivolities of the time, oh, and then you true. just like make it all one time. Like the Wild West had lots of cocaine in their Coca Cola. Let's bring that back. I love more than almost anything a Wild West themed section of a theme park. It's like one of my favorite things. Oh, Wild West section of a theme mm -hmm. park? Oh, like where you get to take a picture and like pretend to be. I just love, I don't know what it, why I do. Knott's Berry Farms got fucking great one. one. I could see you owning a saloon back in the day. Yeah, I'd definitely be like 
the the lady at a saloon and be like, "Get out of here, you old dog!" Get out of here. You know, with my my regulars and stuff. What I love about women in the Wild West times is it was kind of like you can't go to a bar because that's where the men hang out, and that's not appropriate for a lady. Excuse me, I'm going to go home and do psychedelics alone in my house. <laughs> <laughs> Tony really Facts, can we talk about poop again? You know, if we do, we're going to find some horrible crime that's happened with poop, and then we're just going to talk about it. I don't know. I'd, I'd like to do a little shot of apple cider vinegar in the morning mixed with a little bit of water. It makes it satiates me so I don't have to eat breakfast and um, gets your shit right out of your you asshole. You should eat breakfast. I mean, sometimes. I'm trying to go on a little fast. No, don't fast for, like, guys. a breakfast. I mean, I'm obviously eating lunch, and I'll have some Topo Chico's, but, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Topo Chico fast. Right, I'm like Topo Chico fast. Yes, of course. Uh, please Only don't. Health. I don't know. I'm not a health professional. I just. I know. think there is another. Let's talk about. We talked about a lot of slippery slopes tonight. Right. And I'm not talking about poop, <laughs> but uh, fasting and like those intermittent fasting and things. It is a slippery slope to an ED. It sure is. If you're susceptible to it, not everybody is. No, I just want to clean up my gut. I probably got some germs in there. It's holding on. Your body takes care of it. That's why all your organs are in there. That's true. It's true. That's what your body does. I want to flush it all out because I feel like my tummy gets a little big and it's full of shit. <laughs> to get it out of there. What's the mice say? Doma, Doma BT is 151. Have you guys ever thought about collecting money to donate to a program like once a month? We do donate to every series we do. And actually, I have to make a big post for we had, you know, a very weird last half of our season. I'm going to make a post about every place we donated to for the last half of the season because I haven't been posting on social. So I'm going to get back to it. Um, but I kind of I, I would like one of my long term goals is definitely to put like some sort of. Um, foundation together but like a real one that's not like a money funneling one all oh, right so we're not like money laundering which we don't but you know like now it's just the word foundation immediately sounds like a tax uh <laughs> right. like a tax shelter but uh, we're starting a foundation where we take food away from children um so that they're they, they'll, they'll be more attractive when they're right. older yeah. yeah get it away you um no i do I, I i that's one of my goals for sure um i just want it to be a, something that actually helps something yeah, i don't want it to just be a thing that says that we're doing something but it's not you know right it's so hard to find that 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 balance of like something that's substantial but also doesn't just become like a show of that you're doing look look at me doing something right what's it called yeah. grandstanding Probably that called. sounds like. I feel right like thing. I'm a big liberal, but I notice a lot of liberals do that. It's just like we all have to clean up after the oceans, and it's like, all right, I saw you take a shit over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, that's both mostly what social media is for. Right. Right. Um, My favorite thing is like the cleaning, cleaning TikTok. Like I get it, you should be cleaning, but a lot of people they like to grandstand and showcase about how much they clean. Like there's a woman that goes into hotels and she cleans, and you can just tell that it's like, look at me. Was that the lady who got like kicked out of a Burger King or whatever in the bathroom? Oh no, that's a different lady. Mm. Which I think that is a fetish. Oh uh -huh, yeah, I think that one's a fetish, pretty bad. Those are all really fetishy. And, you know, I say go for it, I guess. Yeah, I think, you know what, maybe the cleaning thing, the other cleaning one was a fetish. See, fasting is a, a pretty important. A lot of Western, Western medicine is constructed strictly out of around corporate greed. Thank you, gruesome summary. Listen, I'm going to sit here and fasting. I say you're not allowed to fast. And don't you ever fucking do it. Ever. <laughs> no, you guys do what you're going to do. It's all right. It's good. I know I'm speaking from a place of somebody like me can't do it because it is... You know what? I don't even really need calories. Is kind of like how that will end up for me. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. So just you know, check your check check yourself when you're doing them. Before Make sure you you're feeling yourself. okay. Thanks for the subs tonight, Jones, P. Japes, Doma Bees, one fifty one, and Raven Hollow. Hello, Raven Hollow. Huh. Um, would, I have a sweet little video if you want to end on something nice. Probably we should. Probably. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. On the road again. We're going to Florida on the road again. We've got our donuts and a tank that's full of gas. We're happy and we're on the road again. Woo, look at how huge. Woo, woo. They were at January 6th. <laughs>
<laughs> no, that's where they're that's where they're driving to. They were they were going. That's from that day. No, <laughs> they probably were. <laughs> you guys have. I hope you guys have a, more fun plans. I'm sorry to bring everybody down. And please fast if you want to fast. Don't listen to anything I say. I'm an idiot. I, I don't were... even have shoulders on my shirt. No, it's cute. I thought they were such an uh, like a sweet elderly couple. Happy Valentine's Day. And you know what? You're right. <laughs> Oh, man. It's all right. We're all going to have made mistakes at that. If we get lucky enough to get to that age, we're all going to have done things that people in the generations below will be horrified by. Right. And hopefully it's not too bad. And then you try to be better. Try to be a better person. God. That's how you can. That's there all you, can you go. Do. Something that they would horrify the future generations I've done. Smoking inside. We used to smoke inside, kids. Get out of here. I got to go. <laughs> I can't say anybody's screen names. Cruz Cosa. This is my first time watching this stream. It's great. Are you sure after I just tried to pronounce your name that you liked it still? <laughs> um, but thank you guys for, for joining us. We are going to go weekly, I believe, starting next week. Yeah. Um, we might have a different time, but we'll, we'll keep you posted on everything and let you know. But... Thanks for joining us for Valentine's Day. I think you're supposed to do like, not like this. Wait, what's this? But it's like, the, this is what the kids do. Is this a gang sign? <laughs> no, it's not. It's the gang of. Um, oh, let's do this, Natalie. Let's wait. Do that. There, I kind of did it. I do one heart, you do the other half. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>